Greetings and salutations, viewers. It is Charles from Inspired the Muse coming to you today with Book Haul for Book Expo America 2017, Day 1. We have to split this up, because Day 1, my better half and I got collectively 44 books. Yes. Good lord. I got 33 out of those 44 books. She wins. I do. Hands down. Yep. <laughs> this is why she is the better half. <laughs> Well, not the only reason. Well, I am very good at getting books. Yes. I got hijacked most of the day, networking, doing interviews, which is what I went there to do, so it worked. But let's get to the job at hand of the book haul for Day One Book Expo America 2017. First off, we have Careergasm by Sarah Vermont. I grabbed this one because... The name intrigued me, and the author was delightful. And the line moved pretty quickly. I was surprised. It the was an easy one to snag. Thing. Always appreciative. Yes. We got Beasts Made of Night by Tochi Onyebuchi, which I probably butchered the name of, but I apologize. He was really cool, even though I only got to talk to him for about two seconds, because he had a good long line. Apparently this was going to be a heavy hitter. Or at least a medium hitter. Yeah, I heard that that one's going to be a good one. Uh, it was also featured in their YA book uh, yes. buzz panel that they did. So and I believe this is his first book. Yes, it is. And he so lives in Connecticut. He was really cool and excited that there was such a good turnout. And I'm going to steal that book from you when you are done, because I am very interested. Uh, realistically, you're going to get to it first. Yeah, realistically, I will read it first. <laughs> and tell you how it is. And yes. then I will tell all of you. We have Writing Radar by Jack Gontos. I got this because writing radar. We're primarily literary, or we enjoy books, obviously. I couldn't not. And he was a cool little, he was a cool guy. I actually waited in the uh, autographing line for that one. Oh. It was one of the autograph line ones. Always a good line. I mean, as in long line. Crazy lines. Crazy lines. That'll be in our overall convention review on our podcast coming out on the 15th of June for this year. We have Autonomous by Annalie Newitz, which I managed to snag as we <laughs> went by the booth. Like, you know, we haven't gone by the tour booth lately. Let's just swing by, see what they have before we kind of head out for the day. And, oh, you're signing a tour book right now and there's not really a line? Yeah. Because I'm a fan of tour. I respect tour. I trust tour. They make good work. They do. So. And I actually will... Follow up with uh, her partner was at Book Expo as well, and then we'll talk about her book in a second and the lovely person that she is. It's uh, somewhere. It's in somewhere here. in the pile. You can't see the pile off to the side, but we have an entire pile. Yeah, we do. Five piles. That we're working our way. Yeah. Another tour book, When I Cast Your Shadow by Sarah Porter. On the more YA side of, I think that's tour team, actually, yes. the label. Yep. Yep. I don't remember anything convenient off of this one. In regards to, like, a two-second tail. Yeah, that one I don't know. That's going to happen a lot because we were busy running around like nuts. And some of these things blend together in my head. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. We have Red Clocks by Lenny Zumas. Boop. I know I had a tail, but I completely forget what the tail was. <laughs> we're working on very little sleep, um, so yeah. apologize in advance. We will do longer follow-ups on each book as we yes. read them. We have Betwixters by Laura C. Cantu. Oh. And this was from a new press that was there that we made friends with. And you'll see some of the interviews up on our channel over the next week and a half or so. And some of the interviews we got with them within a couple weeks of when this posts. You actually got this one signed because yes. the author was the one talking to us and she was all excited about Inspire the Muse. It may not show up easily, but we go boop. Um, and so she actually gave us arcs of a bunch of their books that they had and she was more than happy to sign. So yeah. look forward to that post with the follow-up from Winter Wolf Press. Yes. They are a fun time. We have Monster Hunter Siege by Larry Correa. And I almost missed this one because it was in the autographing line at Book Expo. And 
for those who are not familiar, there were basically 14 gigantic master lines for autographed signings that were not at publisher booths. This was one of them. I was in the line next to it, waiting for something else, and I saw, hey, that looks like something up my alley. Hey, I know that name. Why do I know that name? Bayon. Mm -hmm. Bayon Publishing. They're not here this year, but they have an author I have to get. Yep. Because another publisher I enjoy, Bayon. I trust them with sci-fi, hands down. No contest, no questions asked. We also grabbed Code Girls by Liza Mundy. Boop. Over by Hatchet. Or Hachette. Hachette. I prefer I think, Hatchet. I think it's, it's Hachette, more though. Hatchet is more fun, but Hachette is actually, I think, how they the untold, prefer you pronounce it. The Untold Story of the American Women Codebreakers of World War II. I've read books similar to this in style of accounting for the history of women in war, basically, yep. and totally up my alley. Yeah, no, that one looks so. like fun. I might steal that from you as well when you are done. <laughs> or, you know, or beat me to it. Or beat you to it. We have Gunslinger Girl by Lindsay Ellie. It's Eli. Eli. Possibly. Lindsay Eli. Something like Apologies. that. We're sorry. I just love the cover art. I think this was just a it book was a drop. drop. Yep. And uh, I s under Jim James Patterson's new imprint that he's yeah. working on for more um, you know, adult and children's books. So why not? Yep. No, absolutely. And the last one from my side of the book hall is The Shape of Ideas by Grant Snyder. It's so, a very pretty book. And this one was just I needed to get because of the whole concept of the shape of ideas and creativity and how you go about it in comic book form. This one I got personalized because reasons. Yeah. And he was a delight. Well, that's good to know. Okay. So now onto my section. I did not do interviews all day. I basically on Thursday walked the floor and grabbed. I can't, I'm not going to say all the books I can find because I really did only grab things I was interested in, but, uh, I definitely grabbed books, as you can see. So the first one we have is it's hard, Berserker by Emmy Laybourne. I stood in... I'm trying to figure out where the camera is from my angle. It's easier if I hand it by you. Okay, so... You can block me. That's fine. You're prettier. <laughs> no, I'm not. So I actually stood in the signing line for this, um, but it wasn't that long. Uh, it was more... It was longer than I think the people expected it to be. Um, she's written a few other things. I think it sounds like middle grade, but I talked to her and told her I was a teacher, and she said she kind of has a book series for reluctant male readers and told me that it's on her website and she has curriculum designs, uh, and it sounds like she's more than happy to talk to educators. That's awesome. So it's something that I do want to actually look into and check out her website and uh, whole Norse gods thing. I'm into it, so I snagged this book, <laughs> to be honest. All right, this one... I'm really excited about. So this is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. It's an urban fantasy with fairies. Um, I love Holly Black. I've read a lot of her. And this was the book drop first thing Thursday morning that everybody was looking for. I had the luck that I knew where the booth was going to be and stood in the line right outside the booth that nobody else was in. Someone to did get their in. homework. I did. Uh, don't go to the Big Bay line on Thursday. Go to the side. You'll get in faster and be able to snag something like this. But to be fair, they did drop this several times throughout Book Expo. So I feel like most people that wanted it were able to get it. So, but anyways, I'm really excited about this. Uh, the next book, The Last Namsara, I think, by Kristen Cicciarelli. Um... Looks like a cute little fantasy book. I don't know. Oh, much. it's by Epic Reads. Okay. Yep, by Epic Reads. I did it in an Epic Reads drop. They dropped it twice over Book Expo. So I know nothing about it, but the premise sounded interesting. So I'm excited to read it and follow up with how the book is. And the cover's kind of pretty. So. Well, Epic Reads is a lot of fun, so I have faith in them. And they did um, actually have multiple drops, and they were very good about telling you where they are. So props to Epic Reads on that. And their lines were managed. Yay. <laughs> Next one we have is The Glass Bear by Laura DeStefano. Yes. 
Uh, I know about her as an author. She's mainly written dystopian, but this is fantasy. Uh, I got this via Alcrate, so that was kind of cool. I'm and yet it's another Epic Reads. It is, but it was I got this through Alcrate dropped it. Uh, they had a little wheel. You spun, and it, it told you what arc you get. So this is the one I ended up with, and it was kind of the one I was aiming for. So that worked out well for me. Perfect win. It was. Uh, the next book, The Hawkweed Legacy by Irina Brignol. Uh, this is actually a sequel to The Hawkweed Prophecy that I haven't read yet that I've been meaning to. So I picked this up, and I will read the first one first and then get back to you about this one. But I walked by. They were dropping it, so I snagged it. <laughs> that was one of those perfectly timed things. Again, Hachette. Hachette, Yes. The Hachette book uh, booth was my friend. They did drops throughout the day. Um, I feel like I need a fancy, fancy French accent when I say Hachette. Hachette. To pull yes. it off right. So, this book right here, Secret of Souls by... Hold on a second. Aubrey Nixon. I'm really excited she about this. She was a delight. This. Yeah. Uh, this is another Winter Wolf Press book. Uh, basically, the only thing that I need to know about it was that it's a female assassin in a fantasy world. Sold. I was all over it. Uh, they were very nice to give me an arc. So this may probably be actually one of the first things I read and do a review about. And somebody over here got right. to <laughs> interview the author of that. I also have some cool swag for that book that she hmm. was giving out. So we're excited to follow up. Look for that interview within the next week. Yes. And she has fabulous hair. Just saying. So next book, All of the Birds in the Sky by Charlie Jane Anders. This one's actually available already. This is not an arc. Um, but she was signing. And it was in the autographing table that there wasn't much of a line, so I figured I'd jump in it and see. This author was amazing. Uh, she had fabulous pink hair. She was incredibly nice. I told her about Inspire the Muse, and she was all excited about it and actually chatted to me for a good one to two minutes, uh, much to the chagrin of people behind me, I'm sure. <laughs> But just, she seems like a really cool person, and this book seems really cool. So go pick this up. Uh, if nothing else, follow her on Twitter. She's a lot of fun. So, and as I said, he grabbed actually her partner's book, uh, Annalee Newitz. So, Charlie Jane Anders, people. Look her up. Sorry. Poor Mike. I'm sorry. Uh, this one's just a repeat, so I'm just going to show it. I also stood in the Sarah Porter line for When I Cast Your Shadow, so I have that as well. That one's a repeat. One can be a reading copy. It can be. Or this can be a safe copy if the dog eats it. Mine's personalized to me. So I think yours is too. All right, this book, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Jane, okay, this one's going to be very hard to photograph because it's very shiny. So sparkly. Uh, Jane Unlimited by Kristen Kishore. I adore Kristen Kishore so much. And when I find found out, this seemed to be a last minute drop. Hmm. Uh, they added her kind of last minute, it seemed like. Uh, may not be the truth, but it definitely was one of the later ones that came up on their website that was going to happen. But Kristen Kishore, I adore. She wrote Graceling, the whole series, um, but she hasn't come out with anything in a while because if you follow her blog, she's had some writer's block and she was having a hard time. It happens. Um, but if I remember correctly, this is like a Jane Eyre take. Um, I was so excited for this because I love her so much. So to get her new book and be able to get it signed and talk to her, I was super excited. Showed up in the line an hour early and there was already a line. Um, <laughs> Penguin seemed to be shocked that this one was as big as it was. That was a heavy hitter. It was a heavy hitter that they were not expecting to be a heavy hitter. But anyways, this is definitely top of my list. So excited to get this. I was all over it. So, yeah, I have it now. It's shiny. Well, like, top five. Top five. We'll talk about my top one in a while. <laughs> that was a long line. <laughs> so was that one, but the other one was longer. All right, the next one. Timeless by... It's not going to tell me on the back. Uh, Armand Baltazar. Armand Baltazar. Fabulous name. Um, I think this one's Epic Reads, or I grabbed it Epic Reads. Uh, it was just a random drop I walked by. It seemed cool, definitely middle grade, but it seems like an interesting book, <laughs> so I picked it up. I will talk about it when I get to it. <laughs> Bear with me, people. I have a lot of books. <laughs> so the next one is Haunting Prince Dracula by Carrie Maniscalco. Um, this one dropped a couple times throughout the 
uh, book expo. Uh, she was actually there signing. I missed the signing because I was in another line, but they had a huge stack of these. If you were anywhere interested in, like, if you were interested in this book, it was really easy to get, which is great. Uh, she's also under James Patterson's imprint, which Hachette seemed to have been not pushing, but they're trying to kind of Giving solid support. Giving solid support for it. It's more YA and children's books. Which is really cool. Which is really cool. So I actually have her first book, which is Stalking Jack Jack the Ripper. Um, so this is not necessarily a sequel, but following in the same vein. Um, so a I have spiritual this. successor? Yeah. Okay. So um, this is the... By all I know... Nope, this is a sequel. It's the same... Uh, by reading back, <laughs> it's the same character from the first book. That's cheating. So... That's kind of cool, and I got this one. And it has a very pretty cover. Hmm. Uh, next one I have is Carnegie's Maid by Marie Benedict. Uh, there was literally no line for this when I got there. It was on my list. I was in another line at the time. I didn't think I was going to make it, but I did. Uh, source books. Um, I have varied interests, but I love historical <laughs> fiction. So I'm very excited about this book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So And it's personalized, because again, no lines. Next book, Alice Hoffman, The Rules of Magic. Um, she has quite the bibliography. If you're a book fan at all, you've probably mm. heard Alice Hoffman's name come up. I got to meet her for a hot second. She seemed like a very nice person. Uh, surprisingly, this was a penguin book with a very small line at the point that I got into it. So I stood in it and got this. I adored her book, Practical Magic. Um, so I'm hoping this one's really good as well. I haven't read too much by her, but I do like her. So. That was kind of cool. And it has a lovely cover. Yeah. All right. So this one has really cool packaging. Um, I'm pretty sure this was Hachette as well. Uh, this is a box that the book is in. I saw that it has, that it's by the author of, or somebody who's done stuff for How to Train Your Dragon. And I grabbed it because, and it's in this whole box. I'll open it for you. This stuff falls out. Uh, it has like... What the cover is going to look like in the box. You get a cool bookmark in the box. There's a map on the box. Let me tell you. So you know you're in for serious business. I'm in when for they serious business. Map. There's a map. Uh, the book is called The Wizards of Once by Cressetta Cowell. Um, so this one's kind of cool. I think it's more middle grade, I'll be honest. But um, I'll still read it. It looks really interesting. So there's that. I'll but give I've... kudos to Little Brown. The Points for the packaging, packaging and marketing on. for that one. That is cool. Packaging is on fleek. And again, that was one that kind of dropped several times. So, hmm. if you were... I think that one was also at BookCon. I remember seeing it. Hmm. I don't know if they had as many available, but it was there. Next one I have uh, is Max Tilt by Peter Larangis. I don't know too much about this book, but again, I walked by the drop, and it seemed kind of cool. So I picked it up to try it out. Again, more middle grade, but as a teacher who does secondary education will probably just end up in my school library, like my classroom library mm. for kids to check out. But after I read it, because that's always a rule. <laughs> All right, the next one I'm going to actually skip because I have a better copy and a better story for you. We'll tease. Just, we'll just tease. It's a red box. <laughs> but no, I have the actual, you'll see. It's a good story. It's worth the wait, I promise. Next book I have was Roar. By Cora Cormac. Uh, this is not an ARC. This is an actual hardcover copy. Uh, this comes out this week. I think it's June 7th that this comes out. Mm. Um, she is a lovely person. This was a ticketed author. So I stood in line at 7 in the morning to get tickets to get to this. And I stood in line for this. Uh, but I was towards the front of the line. Yes. So um, I got it personalized. Obviously, this is mine. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> this was a book that was on both of our lists. Yep. Or for the day like we both want this but i let you have it yeah because we which feel, is for the best yeah um i got way later. because it was a ticketed author so tickets are limited so we figure if there's one copy in the house we can share it and let somebody yeah. else get it if they really wanted it um again it's tour teen so i'm mm. really i like tour a lot so i trust them and she seemed like a lovely person so i'm very excited for her. and i know a lot of people wanted it yeah so it was a very heavy hitter i was willing to sacrifice my ticket for that yeah it was a heavy hitter on that one. All right, the next book I have is Mask of Shadows by Lindsay Miller, I think. Um, it seems like a fantasy book. This was the first book I grabbed on Thursday. 
because source books did a drop. It was gone in like five seconds. You blink. You blink, it was gone. It didn't show back up that I saw at Book Expo or mm. Book Con so far. But source books did a drop at the very beginning. I was right by <laughs> there when I walked in, so I snagged it. And let's just give props for this very, very pretty cover. That's great. Um, I'm just looking at the back of it, mm -hmm. and I'm intrigued because perfect for fantasy fans of Sarah J. Moss and Leigh Bardugo. Two of my two favorite authors, so yeah, I'm going for that book. Yeah. Uh, the next book I have, Middle Grade again, um, The Shadow, The Legend of Shadow High by Shannon Hale and Dean Hale. Um, it's actually a Ever After High and a Monster High mashup, so definitely middle grade. That's cool. Um, yeah, I, have, I haven't read either series. Neither but... have I, but Shannon Hale, if you've never read anything by her, look her up. Her books are really good. They're not... How do I want to put this? They're not complex, but man, are they a good time. They're well-written. They're fun reads. I highly recommend them, so I, I'll read this. I tend to pitch those as approachable and engageable. Yes. For readers. Definitely. Like, they're fairy tale ish retellings. The Goose Girl, I read it in like three hours. So, Shannon Hale. Look cool. Around. Yeah. She's very good. Uh, next book I got was Rain the Earth by A.C. Gauguin. Uh, this was the random Bloomsbury drop. Bloomsbury um, had a very small booth. They didn't have very many drops. They mm. were there, but. Eh. Smally. Like, they, they're small. But. This seemed really interesting. I know of A.C. Gauguin. Um, I've tried to read her other series, but I'm hopeful about this one. I'll probably give her other series another try, let's be honest. But um, <laughs> uh, Feminist Fantasy is how this is tagged on the back, so I was all Fair over enough. it. Yeah, so I snagged that one. We're getting there. Uh, the <laughs> other random Bloomsbury drop that I got, it didn't happen often, uh, seemed more middle grade, uh, The Unicorn Quest by Camilla Benko. Again, more middle grade, but the cover is adorable, and I like unicorns, so I picked it up. Uh, this one actually doesn't come out till February 6, 2018, so this is a pretty advanced reader's copy. So I might put this towards the bottom of the pile just because it comes out later, mm. so it can wait a little while. So, but All right, the next one. Let me tell you. We got there. There's a story behind this. So we got there at 7 in the morning. We were pretty early in line in the ticketing author line, to be fair. I mean... A solid halfway... A little more than halfway line. forward. Once they finally started. Once they finally started. Lee Bardugo signing was out in a minute. Like Less. Less than a minute. Lee Bardugo tickets were gone. They so must not have had many. They must not have had that many. And she was somebody I really wanted to see, but I was like, all right. It was just a sampler. No big deal. Um, we were leaving on Thursday because I was in pain and I wanted to go. My mm -hmm. shoulder was killing me. I had plenty of books. We were walking out, and in the lobby area, they have this, what they call the Crystal Palace. Um, and they had Six of Crow characters posters, which are really cool looking. Mm -hmm. uh, a photo booth. And... The Language of Thorn Sampler by Lee Bardugo. A ton of them with no line. Nobody even around. There was nobody there. There was nobody to fight with. They were basically begging me to sign up for their email list yeah. and to take pictures. So I was like, all right, what's the catch? Are you really just giving those out? Like, there, there's something here. Hmm. Uh, no, you just had to take pictures and sign up for an email list. I'll take pictures and sign up for an email list to win. Actually, the email, the contest was actually if you signed up uh, you have a chance to win the full set of Lee Bardugo books with the pretty new covers. So that would be cool. I want those. So I hey, signed up, not? and I got the sampler without needing a ticket or a fight or anything. So that was really cool. I mean, it didn't get signed, but I'm very excited about this. And I just have to show the inside out artwork of this. It's hard to tell, but the print is colored. Um, let me find one of the pictures. This is going to be – I know it's hard to see. This is going to be one gorgeous book, so I'm very excited about this. The artist they have for this is on point. Yeah, they are. Um, the three book, the three, so if anybody's like, oh, I missed the sampler, uh, to let you know, the three stories that are in the sampler, you actually can already find online because they've already been published uh, via ebook. So actually, I think if you go on Amazon or even mm. Lee's website, you can find them. 
So if you really want to read them in advance, um, they are actually available. This is just a cool form. So for them in the three other, the three new stories are in that sampler. So nobody gets to read those until the book is out. So in case you're feeling left out, like you missed it, mm-hmm. there are ways to read them in advance now. So just to let you know. Our uh, next book I have is This Mortal Co- Coil by somebody, Emily Suvada. Uh, again, random drop in, I think, Penguin. Nope, Simon Schuster. Sorry. Um, it was a random drop I walked by. Uh, and to me, it's, it's not, no, it seems more sci fi, and that's not normally my thing, but it seems like the movie Gattaca, which I adore. So I'm kind of excited about this one. It's about, like, DNA tampering. So. I'm scanning the back of this while you're showing it, and I'm hooked. I'm intrigued. Yeah. I give it a shot. Yeah. It sounds like Gattaca. So, it's about her father's a geneticist, and they mix with DNA. Uh, it's probably more up my alley. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of excited for this one. This one could be good. Mm. So, we shall see. <laughs> so, the next one I said I, I grabbed for my best friend. We're going to be real honest about this. I grabbed this for me. Mean Girls <laughs> by, uh, this was Scholastic, but this is by Michael McCall Ostow, and it's based on the screenplay by Tina Fey, so yes, it is based on that Mean <laughs> Girls. I will be honest, I love Mean Girls, the movie. I'm not even going to say it's a guilty pleasure. I just love the movie, so I grabbed the book because I kind of had to have this. It's not my normal read at all. It looks short, but it looks fun. This is a good, just quick, fun read. <laughs> I'm excited. We'll be honest about that one. Next one I have is The Jade City by Fonda Lee. Uh, this was another random drop. It's Orbit, so Hachette, um, that I walked by, and they were giving it out, and they said it's like The Godfather with magic. Sounds very intriguing. A little heavier than my normal stuff, but I'm intrigued. Yeah, uh, it's fantasy. So I was all over it, and I grabbed a copy because why not? And, I mean, the cover's pretty, the Jade City, so hmm. we'll try it. And Orbit tends to be pretty good. Um, yeah, they they do good work. Yep. Oh, this next one I'm really excited about. My historical fiction self <laughs> was really excited. And I wasn't sure I was going to be able to get this one because it overlapped with three different things. Uh, but luckily there was no line, so I was able to hop from the Cora Cormac line to this line, then to Kristen Kishore. <laughs> uh, it was a little crazy hour. But um, I, Eliza Hamilton by, oh my god. I just Your had finger is covering it. Susan Holloway Scott. I've read like all of her books, and you'd think I would remember that. <laughs> I'm a huge historical fiction fan. Susan Holloway Scott is actually a decent historical fiction author. Most of her books tend to be fairly historically accurate. I don't really get into the that's not how it happened rage with her. Um, so I got to meet her. She signed the book. Uh, I'm a huge – I haven't seen it because, you know, Hamilton. Good luck getting tickets. But I'm a huge Hamilton fan. I listen to the soundtrack at least three times a week. Hmm. Ask him. He's probably sick of it by now. If you want to give us tickets to Hamilton. By all means, we'll take them. Uh, but it's I, Eliza Hamilton. It's a book in Eliza Hamilton's perspective. It comes out in September. This is also the other one that's on the top of my list. I'm super excited. <laughs> and actually, they did a signing and they did a drop. But Susan Holloway actually went to the booth and signed the uh, drop galleys that they were giving because oh, she had the nice. time. Yeah. So she went from her signing line to the valley drop to sign if you wanted them signed. That's so that was kind of cool. cool. And actually, <laughs> I could have, because they were right next to the penguin mm. line, I could have scooted out of line and grabbed it. But anyways, I stood in line for it. The next one is not mine. <laughs> it's his, but I grabbed it for him. It's Slayers and Vampires. It's kind of the unofficial guide to Buffy and Angel by Edward Gross and Mark A. Altman. And I am a fan of both series. Yeah, he And Whedon in general. Yeah. That was so, on my I want this no matter what list. Unfortunately, he was doing interviews at the time. Yeah. Um, but I was in the Charlie Jane Anders line, and this was right next door because it's a tour book. Um, and this guy had no line or mm. a very, very short one. It was moving. It was short. Um, so I snagged this for him. And let me tell you, Edward Gross is a hilarious human being. He was a lot of fun to talk to. Uh, I gave him the little sticky because I got it personalized to Charles. And he's like, you don't look like a Charles. I'm like, how do you know? I could be a Charles. <laughs> Who are you judging? And so we had a little funny conversation. So if you are in any way a Buffy or Angel fan, I would definitely probably try to pick this up. Um, I'll be honest. I've only seen season one of Buffy. And then Netflix took it off on me. 
Thank you, Netflix. But mm. one of these days I will actually catch up. Next book, The Adventurer's Guild. Uh, this is a Disney drop. Disney did a lot of drops this year, and I was actually surprised by that, because that's not normal for Disney press. I missed Disney entirely, with the exception of skirting around them to crash in a corner. Yeah, but... Um, Which is a shame. Disney actually did a lot of drops this year, but I grabbed this one because it looked cute. Um, it's by Zach Lauren Clark and Nick Eliopoulos. Um, it looks like a middle grade book, but Disney books tend to be pretty good. Um, their, their quality control seems to be decent. It's Disney. It's Disney, yeah. So, I picked it up. It seemed cool. But I was actually surprised that Disney did as many... I love the artwork, too. Yeah, no, the artwork grabbed my eye. Um, that Disney did as many drops as they did. All right, this one's another repeat. Uh, the Gunslinger Girl by Lindsay Eli. I had grabbed it before he did. Uh, they had a huge stack that was just left. Mm. Um, didn't seem to be that popular. People weren't going by Hachette at that point. There may have been other things going on. So that one was fairly easy to grab. Uh, they had it repeated. It was even there at BookCon. I saw it. Yeah, so. they had several drops yeah. for that, which is cool. Oh, <laughs> getting to the end. Uh, this one, Null States by, was it Melka Older? Mm-hmm. Um, she was signing with Charlie Jane Anders, so you basically got two books for the price of standing in one line, which, if you've ever been to Book Expo, lines are crazy. So, uh, I know nothing about this. It definitely seems more sci-fi. It's book two of the Centennial Cycle, so there's a book one I don't have. Um, this is not something I would have honestly grabbed if it was just out, but because she was there and you couldn't not get it. Um, I ended up with it. I'll probably give it to him, because he'll read it. I can see it's from Tor, so I already trust it. Yeah, it's Tor. We just need the first one. But the author seemed like a lovely woman. So, um, yeah, there was that one. Hold on. Got yeah, this yeah. is probably definitely more of my alley. Yeah, it's more sci-fi. <laughs> um, I don't really do sci-fi. All right, winding down. <laughs> this one I'm so excited about. The Glass Town Game by Catherine Valente. Um, she's written a whole bunch of stuff. I've, I, she's been on my radar, but I've never read anything by her. Um, and all I know about this one is that, uh, Charlotte, Branwell, Emily, and Anne Bronte are characters. I am a huge Bronte fan. I want my PhD in Victorian literature. So let's be honest. This book is, has my name on it. And it literally does, because she signed it to me. But, um, I was really excited about this, and I'm very excited that I get to read it. It, um, is actually more of a middle grade. And it's supposedly illustrated, um, but I can't see that from now. Maybe they don't have any illustrations in the arc. Fair enough. But I'm very excited to read this book. Cool author? Um, she was not... She seems like a very cool person. Uh, she also seems like she's the typical book person where crowds are not her thing. Uh, so uh, she she seemed enough. very socially awkward, which, trust me, socially awkward person speaking, mm, I could just danger. imagine being socially awkward and being in that situation. So she seems like a nice person, but definitely a little... Maybe more shy. one-on-one. Yeah, more one-on-one, she would have been better. Um, this one I actually think you got, so I'll let you, because that doesn't seem like I don't remember picking that up. So this one is Hollow Man by Mark Pryor, and... Unfortunately, I don't remember snagging this one. It ended up in our bag. Maybe somebody just uh, <laughs> dropped Either, it in our uh, bag. Either someone might have gifted us a book, or this might actually be Justin's. Could be. Because he joined us for day one. Yep. He'll have his own book haul. Mystery but, book! Uh, woo! <laughs> Seventh Street Books. I don't know anything about them. I'm sorry, this is a little underwhelming. Um, we don't have a story for this one other than... We have, the story is we don't know. <laughs> we have so many books, they started birthing other ones. Oh dear. That's going to be a huge problem then. Huh. Yeah. Alright, my next book actually happened by accident. Um, Bonfire by Kristen Ritter. Yes, that Kristen Ritter. Uh, she's Jessica Jones on the Netflix show, Jessica hmm. Jones. Um, she was Don't Trust the Bee in Apartment 23. And what I know her for is Gilmore Girls. She played the girl I can never remember the name of that Rory makes friends with in college. Uh, Olivia was her friend. Oh, the other one. The other one. Um, the girl with that name. The girl with the name. But anyways, um, this I was just walking by and it was a drop. So I actually know nothing about this. This seemed really cool. Uh, but 
Okay, I'll be honest. It was Kristen Ritter, so I grabbed it for the name. Um, we'll see what it's like, and I will eventually remember what character she plays. A uh, girl I actually made friends with in line was at the drop, and she's like, what are they dropping? And I'm like, a book by Kristen Ritter, and she's like, who's that? I'm like, Rory's friend on Gilmore Girls, the, one of the artsy ones from the last series. She's like, oh! So, <laughs> yeah, if you're a Gilmore Girls fan, you know who I'm talking about. And you're probably um, shouting the name to us. The one who was dating Marty! If you need any... Oh, for goodness sake, what is her name? Yeah, it was Olivia and, um... Insert name here. Yeah. I'll look that up for you guys, because it's really going to bother me now. And I have watched Gilmore Girls, like, a hundred times. And Even I've gone about two or three times around now. Yeah, so the, the fact seasons, that so. I cannot think... Lucy! Yeah! <laughs> Lucy from Gilmore Girls. By all means, post it in the comments as well, just for good measure. <laughs> and the last yeah, that... book was actually the first book I stood in line for. Um, the Radium Girls by Kate Moore. Um, really, I've actually seen this on the shelf. I've seen a few things about it online. This one is available for purchase already. This is not an art. It's hardcover. Um, it's about uh, the girls that used to work with Radium back in the 20s and 30s and the how horrible it was and they didn't realize the health concerns and hmm. the cover-ups that were happening about the girls that were getting sick from it because obviously we know that radium is highly toxic but they didn't back then mm. and it was this huge deal um this book seems really really interesting and this one is one that i we were, really wanted this one yeah this is one i picked up for both of us because he was all over it i actually had almost bought it several times yeah, in the store same here so i'm really excited about this um i got into that whole style with the Girls of Atomic City. Which, we'll get there. Um, but, because I have the, uh, but, yeah. anyways, I'm ex really excited. I heard that this book will break your heart, uh, and that it's really upsetting, but definitely, even before reading it, I could tell you that if you are always interested in history and women's history and anything like that, pick this up. And the author was a lovely human being. As Yay. Well. So, um, Radium Girls. Check it out. And... <laughs> Somehow, that was everything we grabbed on day one of Book Expo America 2017 in regards to books. Yeah. We have like a good dozen bags mm -hmm. and a lot of swag and bookmarks and business yep. cards from various Buttons. people that we met and had a lot of fun with. Just because of the length of time, we're skipping those, Yeah. unfortunately. But there was a lot we of got great bags. stuff. <laughs> we got bags for our bags. <laughs> yep. Um, Buttons, swag. Um, All the good stuff. Yeah. So it was a good day. It was a good day. It was a lot of fun. Mm. I'm still sore. <laughs> so am I. Because I was carrying all those on my shoulder. <laughs> so. And then on mine. And then I used husband as a pack meal. I'm sorry. You gotta keep me around for something. I do. I do. All right. Yeah, that was everything for day one. Stay tuned for day Stay two. Stay tuned. We'll do day two shortly. And if you want to get notifications for when we post new stuff up, like all the interviews that I did on day one, subscribe to the channel so you can see all the crazy shenanigans that we collectively got up to. And we'll see you all next time. Bye.